going to show you the secrets to the perfect t-shirt separations in Adobe Illustrator. Designing shirts in Illustrator is pretty much the industry standard for a perfect, super clean design. I'm going to assume you already know how to get to this point, so let's just jump right in. This is a great example of a simple vector t-shirt design with a handful of colors that need to get printed. The first thing you want to do is set up a couple of layers for each different part of the shirt. I always create a layer at the very bottom for your t-shirt color, one layer for each spot color in your design, a layer if you have an underbase, and one last layer for your registration marks, guides, and other information. The easiest place to start is creating a rectangle for the shirt color on its layer and locking it by clicking this little icon right here. When I designed this artwork, I made it in a non-destructive way, meaning that my fonts are still editable and each of these colors are layered up on top of each other so I can make changes easily. But now that I have the approval of the client, it's me, I'm the client, and I'm working with my final file, I can start to expand my type and strokes and cut out each color from the others in the design and put them all on their own layers. Command A will select all, and then I can go up to Object, Expand, and click OK. If your fill and stroke still shows that there's a stroke, select all again and click Expand again. This will also expand any pattern fills that you might have used. Command A is going to be your friend here when you select all again and group everything together with Command G. Then open your Align panel and change this to Align to Artboard and click these two buttons to center to both the X and Y axes. And with everything still selected, use this menu to set the art to the actual print size. In my case here, it's 12 inches wide and I'll just let the height be whatever's proportional. Open the Pathfinder from your window menu. If your design is one color, you can use this Unite button, but if it's multiple colors like this one, you'll want to click Merge. This will cut out each color from the others, but it will also create some empty paths as well. Here's a quick way to get rid of those empty paths. Select your pencil tool with the shortcut N and draw an empty line over to the side of your artboard. Then select your magic wand tool and select your empty path and it'll select all of the other empty paths and you can delete them just by hitting delete. Obviously you can do this with the cleanup option, but this one just feels faster to me because I can do it within my regular workflow. Now you can use your magic wand to select each color and put them on their own layer. Once a solid color is selected, you can use command X Select your destination layer and press Command F to paste in place. Repeat this for each solid color. And now that you have each color on its own layer, you could select each one and convert it to a spot color. If you're lucky enough to have a Pantone book and the Pantone swatches in Illustrator still, you can search for your colors in this window and apply them to your swatches. If you're just wanting to call out basic spot colors like black or white, you can use your magic wand to select the color, double click the swatch up here and change this menu to spot. You can also adjust the tone of the color and change its name by typing in this text box and clicking OK. If you click this little button here in your swatch panel, you can change your view from swatches to list. This is really helpful when making steps so that you can see your color names quickly. Once you have all of your colors called out and applied to your artwork, go to Window, Actions and open the default actions folder. Select Delete Unused Panels and press this play button and all of your default swatches, unused brushes and symbols will all be deleted like magic. This will help you send the cleanest file to print. Let's move on to the base. You won't need to use this in every case, but I'm gonna show you how to do it for when you will. Select all once again and copy all of your art. Select your underbase layer that you set up earlier, move it to the top of your layers for ease and visibility and paste the entire piece of art on this layer. Use the Pathfinder again, and this time, you'll use the Unite button to make all of your art into a solid color. Select your entire underbase layer by clicking this little button here, and go to Object, Path, Offset Path. I have this set up as a custom shortcut since I use it a lot. I replaced the Open Bridge function on Command Option O, since I need to offset things way more than I need to open some old application that does nothing for me. When you use Offset Path, you can type in negative 0.5 points in this window, allowing you to shrink the artwork that you have selected in order to choke your underbase so no white shows through when the base is printed. After you click OK, your new artwork will be selected. So before you do anything else, click Command X to cut this art to your clipboard. Now select and delete your old artwork and press Command F to paste your new choked artwork in place. Press Command G to group that all together and make a new swatch for your underbase like you did before. I like to make mine a pop color like a bright cyan or magenta. This will be printed in white, but making it a bright color will help you keep track of it visually during the design process. Now that your underbase layer is done, you can move it back down in the layers panel to be under your other print colors. Now we're going to create registration marks. 
You can either make some from scratch or search for a vector registration mark online. The important thing here is that you put these on their own layer and apply the registration swatch to them from this window. Now you want to type up some text with the name of your file and any other information like the placement of the print, whether it's the front, back, sleeve, etc. This text layer should also be set to the registration swatch. Now type out the name of each color that you have and select each name and apply the swatch for the actual spot color that it coordinates with. If you want to see a quick proof of how these will print, go to Window Separations Preview. You can turn these swatches on and off to get a really awesome view of each color layer. This will help you know for sure if you messed anything up or if you need to apply spot colors to any other parts of your art. If you're sending this file to a printer, you're now done. But if you're printing this yourself, you'll want to go to File, Print, and click this Output tab, and you'll see your swatches here in the Document Inks list. All right, I hope that helps. I know there's not a ton of information about this out online. If you need to take a step back and see how to actually design the artwork for your t-shirt, watch this video. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for checking out my videos. And like always, we'll catch you on the next one.